Thanks, uh, Colin Corley. Yes, I'm sharing with Deputy Butler. I'll move the amendment in just uh, a second. Um, I just want to say at the outset that um, we in Fianna Fáil absolutely support the principles set out in the bill and we are absolutely committed to working to improve this bill to make a real difference. And I also want to thank um, Deputy David yeah. Cullinan for consulting with me in advance of this debate and to reiterate to him that I'm happy to be involved with him and others in this House in leading uh, to effect real change in this area. Um, with that in mind, I want to propose an amendment on behalf of our party to the second reading, and it's as follows, that Dáil Éireann resolves that the bill be deemed to be read a second time this day 12 months to allow for scrutiny by the Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation Select Committee and for the committee to consider submissions and hold hearings that have regard in particular to ensure the following. That the, bill, that the proposed bill examine proposals to ban zero hour contracts and that the problems caused by the increased casualisation of work that prevents workers in low hour and zero hour type contract arrangements from being able to save and have job security. Also to ensure that the bill has sufficient flexibility in its application for small business and provides a simple approach in this regard while lessening the administrative burden on small business. That the committee would review section 18 of the Organisation of Working Time Act relating to the provision of zero hour contracts to allow workers on low and zero hour contracts a minimum set of hours and the right to request more hours. That the committee take on board the study on the prevalence of zero hour contracts among Irish employers and their impact employees on employees as carried out recently by the University of Limerick. That the, which will, the work of the committee will also have to ensure that the proposed bill examines changing the remit of the low pay commission to review proposals on banded hour contracts for those on low pay. Also to ensure that the social partners brief the committee and make presentations to address their concerns of both sides of the industry in order to provide a fair and workable okay. system that works for both employers and works in a fair and proportionate manner. And finally, to fully discuss and explore the practical issues and consequences that may arise as a result of these proposals. That's our motion as um, tabled um, and proposed by me on behalf of our party. And I'd also like to um, say to the House and to the members who are here that I've discussed this um, amendment and our, the Fianna Fáil approach in relation to this with the leadership of the Irish Congress of Trade Unions and they're fully supportive of our approach in this regard. Um, John Corla, before I continue, I'd like to extend my best wishes and that of my party to Kevin Foley on his appointment as Chairman of the Labour Court and to Una Buckley on her selection for the position as Director General of the Workplace Relations Commission. We in Fianna Fáil have consistently stood on a platform that workers deserve a fair reward for the work performed. Too many, worker, too many workers, most of which are women, are in unstable work as they are only offered part-time, temporary employment or zero-hour contracts. Workers in such precarious positions face uncertainty every week, never knowing in time the hours that they are required to do, and this leads to a lack of security in relation to how much they are actually going to earn. On a broader level, the uncertainty around zero-hour contracts prevents people from getting mortgages, entering rental agreements and being able to make financial commitments. In our recent general election manifesto, Fianna Fáil supported banning zero-hour contracts that are abusive towards workers and changing the remit of the Low Pay Commission to putting forward proposals on banded hour contracts for those on low pay. The Commission is an independent body that comprises worker, and employer representatives and that works in an evidence-based manner. Banded hours are ones that means to enable workers on low and zero hour contracts in certain sectors more certainty in their weekly work hours by providing a minimum set of hours. Any proposal in this area must, be, must carefully marry enhancing certainty in work hours for employees while balanced by the flexibility to facilitate changes in this area seamlessly for small business. While we support the general principles of the bill, there are too many gaps and weaknesses present as currently worded to achieve the intended outcome to which I think the vast majority of the people of deputies in this House want to 
uh, achieve in terms of achieving a positive outcome. We are therefore tabling a standing amendment to facilitate the passage of the bill to the cross-party committee, as I have already outlined to you, for further scrutiny before it passes second stage. This is to permit considerably this is to permit considerably amendments to be made to the bill while enabling worker and employer representatives to input into the process. The Select Committee must examine proposals to ban zero-hour contracts and the problems caused by the increased casualisation of work that prevents workers in low-hour and zero-hour type contract arrangements from being able to save or have a job or any job security. Fundamentally, this bill, as is currently constituted, has a major failing in making no reference or proposed changes to any primary sections of legislation that relates to zero-hour contracts, namely Section 18 of the Organisation of Working Time Act. It's also worth noting that Sinn Féin failed to ban zero-hour contracts last year in the Northern Ireland Executive, and they failed to bring forward similar proposals in the bill laid before the House this evening. Jointly administering rule in government with the DUP instalment, Sinn Féin reign over an employment landscape where up to an estimated 28,000 workers may be on zero-hour contracts. While I welcome the report carried out by the Kemi Business School in the University of Limerick into the prevalence of zero-hour and low-hour contracts that exist in Ireland, the study concluded that while zero-hour contracts are not extensive, it also said that if and when contracts do exist. While both involve non-guaranteed hours of work, the main difference is that workers on zero-hour contracts are obliged to make themselves available for work, while those on if and when contracts are not contractually required to make themselves available for work. The University of Limerick report needs to be carefully examined by the Select Committee with social, partnership, with social partner contributions in this area. It is vital that there are robust safeguards in place to police against any employee being exploited in terms of their hours and conditions. My party supports permitting workers on low-hour contractual arrangements to request additional hours and not suffer victimisation in future regarding rostering and conditions as a consequence. A balanced approach encompassing flexibility and security for employees and employers on low-hour contracts is vital for sound and robust workplace legislation. The bill brought before the House tonight does not provide sufficient flexibility for small business in its application. Generally, the bill would have a very broad impact than what is envisaged. For example, it would apply to every private sector workplace, regardless of the sector or pay type in operation. The bill would also, the bill would also include sectors where employers and workers have negotiated pre-existing banded hour type arrangements. The six month continuous employment uh, period provision in section three as the measure of a person's average weekly working hours is too rigid and when you consider seasonal work in sectors such as retail and hospitality. The bill proposes that all employees in circumstances other than severe financial difficulties are given extra hours on request. If employers do not agree to this, they will have to appear before the Workplace Relations Commission and the Labour Court. This is placing increased costs and a large administrative burden to demonstrate if this condition is met. The bill in its current guise is not fit for purpose and will not achieve the intended outcome. What is needed is a balanced approach encompassing flexibility for employers and security for employees on low hour contracts and it's vital for sound and robust employment legislation. I want to reiterate that we support ending zero hour type arrangements that are abusive towards workers. This bill fails to address that outcome. We must ensure that the bill has sufficient flexibility in its application for small business and provides a simple approach in this regard while lessening the administrative burden. In this manner, further intensive legislative scrutiny is required with contributions by social partners at committee to address the concerns of both sides and in order to provide a fair and workable system that works for both workers and employers in a proportionate manner. In conclusion, um, Corla, I want to just refer to an email that I received uh, today from 
the uh, Assistant General Secretary of the Mandate Trade Union, uh, Mr. Jerry Light, and he said that we intend communicating with all our members tomorrow, being the 6th of July, letting them know the position of each political party in this House. I'm glad to say for a second time that Fianna Fáil fully supports the principles in this bill. We want to make this bill better. We're happy to work with all the stakeholders in relation to it because it has a good intent. And also to reiterate that we consulted with the leadership of the Irish Congress of Trade Unions in relation to this bill, and they were happy to uh, support our approach to dealing with the matter. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Deputy Collins. Deputy Mary Butler. Thank you, Crown Corley. Bringing clarity to working hours is essential to creating decent jobs. Workers in precarious zero-hour contracts positions face uncertainty every week. This uncertainty impacts greatly on the whole family. The same uncertainty as to the hours they are required to work on a weekly basis. The argument for why zero-hour contracts are bad for workers is obvious. Without a set number of guaranteed working hours, many workers will struggle to plan financially, unable to take out a loan, get a mortgage or simply just to plan ahead. Those seeking full-time employment or those that are the family's main breadwinner struggle to adequately plan for the future. Fianna Fáil supports the banning of zero-hour contracts that are abusive towards workers. Workers deserve a fair reward for the work performed. Too many more workers, of which most are women, are in unstable work as they are only offered part-time, temporary employment or zero-hour contracts. I welcome the report carried out by UL in the into the prevalence of zero-hour contracts and low-hour contracts in Ireland. And I would ask the Minister and also the Select Committee of the Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation to carefully examine the recommendations closely. Fianna Fáil supports banning zero-hour contracts that are abusive towards workers and changing the remit of the Low Pay Commission to put forward legislation on banded hour contracts for those on low pay. However, even though well-intentioned, this bill is a short-sighted attempt to deal with the issues at hand, with the proposals quite inflexible for small businesses. The bill requires significant changes and intensive scrutiny before proceeding to second stage, so we in Fianna Fáil have tabled an amendment to motion for second reading. The amendment agrees that this will, bill will be read a second time in 12 months from now, after hearings on this bill are held on the fundamental matters that are not resolved in this simplistic piece of legislation. Fianna Fáil proposes the following. Dáil Éireann resolves that this bill be deemed to be read a second time this day 12 months to allow for scrutiny by the Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation Select Committee and for the Committee to consider submissions and hold hearings that have regard in particular to ensure that. A, the proposed bill examine proposals to ban zero-hour contracts and that problems caused by the increased casualisation of work that prevents workers in low-hour and zero-hour type contracts arrangements from being able to save or have any job security. B, ensure that the bill has sufficient flexibility in its application for small businesses and provides a simple approach in this regard while lessening the administrative burden. C, that the Committee review Section 18 of the Organisation of Working Time Act relating to the provision of zero-hour contracts to allow workers on low and zero-hour contracts a minimum set of hours and the right to request more hours. D, that the committee take on board the study on the prevalence of zero-hour contracts among Irish employers and their impact on employees as carried out by the University of Limerick. E, the proposed bill examines changing the remit of the Low Pay Commission to review proposals on banded hour contracts for those on low pay. F, that social partners brief the committee and make presentations to address the concerns of both sides of industry in order to provide a fair and workable system that works for both employers and workers in a fair and appropriate manner. This bill does not ban zero-hour contracts that are abusive towards workers, which we in Fianna Fáil support as a primary policy outcome. As a starting point, any proposal should be to provide a minimum guaranteed number of working house hours to workers on zero-hour contracts within the context of the terms of Information Acts. The bill does not deal with the primary section of legislation that deals with zero-hour contracts, Section 18 of Organisation of Working Times Act. 
Section 2.1, and I quote, deals with an employee on zero-hour contracts that has not been required to work for the employee that week to be paid by the employer the pay he or she would have received if he or she had worked for that employee in that week, whichever of the following is less, namely one, the percentage hours referred to, or number two, 15 hours. The bill is, a too, broad, it is too broad in application and, and it would apply to all employment contract arrangements in the state with no flexibility regarding, regardless of sector and regardless of whether they operate banded hour arrangements or were low pay or high pay employments. Our amendment would ensure that the bill had sufficient flexibility in its application for small businesses and provide a simple approach in this regard while lessening the administration burden. The current bill as worded would have a very broad impact. For example, it would apply to every private sector workplace regardless of sector, pay type or if banded hour arrangements were already operational. Our amendment, the proposed bill, examines changing the remit of the low paid commission to review proposal on banded hour contracts for those on low pay would address this. The bill detailing six months continuous employment period provision in section three as the measure of a person's average weekly working hours is too rigid. When you consider seasonal work in sectors such as retail, hospitality and tourism. The bill is inflexible for small businesses and proposes that all workers, as defined in the bill, must, in circumstances other than severe financial difficulties, be given more hours on request. If employers do not agree to such requests, they will find themselves funding appearances before the WRC and the Labour Court, attempting to prove severe financial difficulties. Our amendment would address this by ensuring the bill has sufficient flexibility in its application for small businesses and provide a simple approach in this regard. Every single employer indicating the number of hours being allocated to workers in the forthcoming week or month and which band these hours fall under. This would impose a very significant burden on all employers, even if every staff member was on a full-time contract. It is vital that social partners have an input into legislative scrutiny in the role of committee and make representations and presentations to address the concerns of both sides of industry in order to provide a fair and workable system that works for both employers and workers in a proportionate manner. For these reasons, Fianna Fáil have secured agreement from the government for the bill to undergo further legislative scrutiny before it passes to second stage. As already stated, we have submitted an amendment to motion for second reading to facilitate the passing of the bill to the cross-party Oireachta Select Committee of Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation for future scrutiny. This is in order to make considerable changes to the bill to bring consistency and clarity to the issues at play while enabling worker and employer representatives to input into this process. Thank you, Ciampola. Uh, Deputy Butler. Deputy Alan Kelly, you've